Okay, getting the system utilities and set up, we're going to go ahead and press this wrench icon. And it went back to where I was before, so I'm going to go back to the general and we'll walk through these screens together. First, you're going to enter your information here, your department, make sure the date and time are correct. Screen saver, typically I leave these off so they don't just appear in the middle of an exam. Screen type, how are you going to save the screen when you hit the save button? So when you hit save, is it going to show just the image and the patient information, only the image or everything on there, including the parameters that you saved? We talked about this here, how many cine frames you want to store. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is I can set it at 10 seconds, but still the maximum number of frames it can save is 256. So depending on your frame rate, if your frame rate is 70 frames per second, it's not going to save 10 seconds worth of video. It's only going to save about four and a half seconds of video for 256 frames. Uh, image area, this TGC curve, you can get it to appear on screen and how long you want it to appear on screen. I'm going to check this back to about three seconds. This real-time saving, as we discussed earlier, it allows you to hit the Cine Review key or Cine Save key while you're doing the exam so you don't have to freeze and then click and then wait for it to save. It just You hit save and it's going to save exactly what you're looking at on the screen. Options for transmitted images. If your images are showing up too dark, you can go ahead for this DICOM and whatnot for U-Disk. If it's showing up too dark, you can increase the brightness contrast uh, for how it is exporting if you don't like how it's being done. Same thing, PC print. If you go to a PC printer, it's going to say, what, what is it that you want to see? Measurements. This is just where you can set your distance units, and it's pretty straightforward. The configuration, however, is not necessarily straightforward. Here you would check the package. Uh, let's go to that vascular, and here you can do the B mode, M mode, and Doppler. And this is where you can change which appear on screen. So if I don't want to look at all these, I can just remove them from that menu by clicking remove. And I can move them up and up and down. So if I want mid, common, carotid to appear at the top, I can go ahead and do that. And when I click OK, every time I hit from Doppler mode in a vascular, each time I hit the calc, that is going to be what shows up. And then you can also hit this triangle here to scroll down. And note here is where you can also change it from auto trace to manual or a two point measurement. This is just a little more complicated and, and cumbersome than using the update key when I hit the calculation button before. But again, this is where you can click manage and you can even add or remove calculation packages. If you don't want urology to show up, you can go ahead and remove it. So uh, remember when I made a measurement, I can hit the change key and it'll go through the various measurement packages. I can just go ahead and delete those from there. And if you want to go back, you can always uh, hit default. And if that doesn't work, you can contact us to reinstall the software. It's a fairly simple process. OB tables, uh, which measurements you want to use as far as the calculations and the packages and the growth charts. Comment, it's pretty straightforward. You can create your own comment library. You can edit your own comment. You're going to select the package where you want those comments to appear. First, uh, we're going to choose here. We're going to do cardiac, and then these are the types that can be added to your menu. Body markers, same thing. Exam mode, we took a look at this before, where we can add and remove from that default screen what's going to show up. We can change the comments, body marks, and measurements that appear for each one of those measurements. Image freeze configuration. What do you when you hit freeze? What's going to show up on that screen? Keyboard. Here's where we're going to set up the keyboard setup. Now you can change what the foot switch does. Save image. Save cine. Print one. Print two. P one. P two. The body mark and the arrow. Like this is where it's set. I can change this to do an arrow, a comment, clear. I can also have that P1 right here, store image, store directly to the disk. Here's, these are all the functions that you can do each time you hit that. So F12 is set to biopsy right now, even though we've already got a biopsy up there, but you can set that. User. That's this one, that is to clear right now, but again, you can get that to change to whatever you want. You can even set it as a freeze key. Okay, 
DICOM storage. The setup for DICOM on this system is, is relatively simple. Um, you're going to just go ahead, I'm going to say I want to add a new service. And you're going to choose DICOM storage, work list, structured reports. You're going, they're going to give you an AE title, your IP address, SCP port that you're just going to give it. They're going to give you a port number like 1234, port 104. Your IP address, I'm sorry, timeout, just leave that at 10 seconds. Compression mode, this is important. If it's uncompressed, it's going to be a very large file and will take a very long time to transfer over a network. Typically, you're going to want J, JPEG with a low compression. You can choose lossless too, it's just going to be a larger file, but a low compression is still a very good image and very few can actually tell the difference. Leave the max frame rate at full unless it's not that important to you. And here's where you're going to check default. If you check default, when you go ahead and send that DICOM storage, it's going to automatically send to this one. So as you'll see, I have multiple servers set up in different places. So this one is the one I have set to default. It shows that it's true. Now, once you add that DICOM, let's say I went ahead and added all this information here. Here's my DICOM information for my local server. I click done. Now, if I don't click verify, it's not going to work. So after this is done, I have to click verify. It's going to contact the server and say, yes, it was okay. Now, if it is not okay, you may not have set up the network yet, which is the next tab over. Or, well, let's go to the network real quick and I'll come back to this. For example, like if I do this DICOM storage here and I click verify, it's going to fail. You see it's taking time. I'm not going to wait for it. Oh, there you go. It says failed. So let's go ahead and set up my network. I've got this set up at DHCP, and you may or may not have that option. You have to check with your IT person. This is not something that we can support. And actually, none of this DICOM is something that will support. This is further than we would typically go because it is pretty simple on this machine. Yeah, they might give you a static IP address, and you'll enter all that information here. This test is also called a ping. So if I choose the DHCP, I have an IP address that you can test. It would be something on the network. And again, your IT person would give it to you. If you don't know what it is, um, you would have to get that information from them. If I hit test, it says testing. And it says, okay. So this means I am connected to the network. There's many times uh, where your DICOM is failing and this is the first place you're going to check. First, you want to check to make sure that you can ping. But then if you get failed here, it means something is wrong. Uh, it could be your port number, your IP address, or your AE title. And typically, 99% of the time, it's going to be one of those issues there. Um, and you have to check and double check with your um, IT professional. Because if you are connected to this and it says OK, and the DICOM is not sending, um, it is not a problem with this machine 99% of the time. So you can want to check with them, make sure the port is, and then they can check their log to see if it's coming through. Down along here, you can send while saving, so it automatically goes to the DICOM server each time you save a message, uh, an image. And DICOM structured report, you can also send after ending the exam. The report will go automatically to the DICOM server. One other thing is if you are sending DICOM structured reports at this time on this machine, you do have to send in two different exports. So when we went through that export screen, I'll just go to that real quick. Go to my archive. And if I want to go ahead and send that structured report, you send exam, and the first time I chose DICOM storage. The second time, after that's complete, it's really simple because you stay on the screen. Just click DICOM SR and click export, and then it's going to go ahead. And you can go ahead even while it's exporting, and the queue is in the background. Like I showed the DICOM queue, I can just go back while it's sending. I can still go ahead and send that DICOM structure report. It's pretty simple. Uh, in the future, they may add a little checkbox to say that you can do that, but it's not the case at this time. So I'll go back to that menu. We have our network, the DICOM setup. 
uh, the system. This is where you're going to get various system information, um, video output, how do you want it to show up if you have the output attached for a video monitor. When you have any updates, this is the screen you'll come to. You'll download it to a USB disk, we'll give you instructions, and you're just going to simply click update and it will do it for you. It's pretty simple. So all this, there's system maintenance that you might want to go through from time to time. And here it's going to show you all the functions that you have added to your machine that will tell you various items. Here's where you're going to set up your printer for how it prints as well for a USB printer. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we're done. That concludes the training for the Chison EBIT 60. Thank you for watching.